Are y'all ready for this? Welcome back to the Contaminated Dungeon, people. Big dogs out there. If you're watching for the first time, this is the Fade the Public podcast. Nicholas Animal Snacks. Our Twitter handles are down there. You can follow us at Fade the underscore public. We are basically going to take a bunch of questions from y'all, from the public, from the big dogs. Whoever follow us on Twitter, we asked... You know, what do you want to hear us fucking spew out of our mouths in this week's episode? Too much football related stuff. Some of them, yeah, honestly, we need more um we need more weird questions. It's diversity. Diver- yeah, diversify the revenue always. Can I set you up for that? So last episode we, we got into a whole commissioner episode. We basically broke down any of the rules that we've made to our our high stakes league any changes that we love so if you missed that make sure you go check it out a lot of positive feedback on that a lot of cool um rules everyone was a fan of the world cup rule so i think we should actually i think think we should bring that up at the the e-town get down for sure um couldn't agree more so first plug is snacks uh do we have a location so this this saturday of course this saturday uh the fantasy footballers are coming to new york city uh to gramercy theater to have one of their live shows we will be attending. We want to do a meetup prior to the show. It starts at 7 p.m. Eastern time. We are going to meet up at whenever Snacks finds a location. A few moments later. All right, so we're going to meet at the Gramercy Ale House, 272 3rd Ave, which is like a couple-minute walk from Gramercy Theater. It's right around the corner. Right around the corner. Nice and cozy for us. So if it rains, we could just sprint there, and we'll be fine. So we're going to meet there at like 6 o'clock, but make sure you are following us on Twitter. Again, the pages that we listed so that you can kind of stay up to date if anything changes. That is where you will find those changes. So today, as I said, we are going to get into some listener follower questions. Uh, it's going to be a whole mailbag of ran- random NFL fantasy. I don't. I actually didn't look at all of them, so it might be some weird lifestyle kind of shit going on. And then we're going to get into a uh, herd of goats, the funniest or best ways to die. I can't wait. That's going to be a really fun I one. Can't. I'm really, it's going to be dark and hysterical. It's not going to be dark at all. It's going to be a little dark. It's I'm not. Dark. I don't think I'm going to have a smile off my face once. <laughs> you might <laughs> die. All right. So y'all ready to roll? You ready yeah. to get into the show? I mean, I'm ready. I guess. All right, Scott, hit that motherfucking intro. All right, first question comes from Jameson. Jameson. What a name. Jameson Sin. Jameson Son. Love that shit. He says, best must RB handcuffs. So, we're talking about running backs behind the running back. The man behind the man. Now, I'll start off by saying when it comes to running backs, I mean, when it comes to handcuffs, I'm not someone who usually drafts handcuffs because the problem with handcuffs is that we very rarely know who the handcuff is to begin with. A lot of people think they know. There are a few. There's a couple that are clear cut. Sure. And after that, for sure, Um, it's messy. But I would say, yeah, there's probably only like four or five legitimate handcuffs where if the featured back goes down, the next back up is going to grab that exact role. And you're confident about that, right? A lot of times, the reason the starter is a starter is because he's fucking good. They're just and the that guys, much better. Yeah. And the guys behind him are going to need to form a committee. And in, that's, and in that case, where a starter goes down and then there's two or three backs that will fill that entire role together, it's not worth drafting those guys. So for the most part, those backup guys aren't worth drafting, in my opinion, because they're going to be you know waiver wire pickups. But you'll never be able to predict when the starter goes down. So... For the most part, I would rather take a flyer on a high upside guy that is maybe in a position battle in the beginning of the year, right? And maybe they they kind of break out within weeks one, two. We see them their snap counts going up and up, and like, okay, I, I think I got my guy. Rather than waiting on an injury. That being said, you know, um, if you do take a top notch back, maybe you do want to handcuff that guy. So, do you guys have anyone in mind that you know, if you draft a running back, there is a, a handcuff that you want to own? Yes. If I and by the way, just to your point, I think you're getting too cute if you're thinking in your middle late rounds, like, all right, which which backup running back handcuff am I going to get? This It's going to overflow your thought process. And in during... Show some respect. 
Show some respect. Are you kidding me? I cough off camera, <laughs> off, off mic. This guy interrupts get me every second I get a chance <laughs> to Get out of the fucking speech. picture. Well, I, inter- I, I want to make that public. I interrupt you so I, I stop you before you embarrass yourself. You want to make yourself. that public. Right. Yeah. We I, fade the public I really, ju- I just try to Whatever help. you're saying, we're fading right now. Fading. Whatever. But I was saying, during draft night, you're probably locked in and you're sweating and your your <laughs> thoughts are running crazy. And if they're not, then you're doing fantasy football wrong. You should probably change leagues. Facts. So what I'm saying, don't get too cute. But if I'm drafting Alvin Kamara, I'm taking, I'm looking to take Latavius Murray somewhere in the back. See, see, that's that's where I think oh, that's this, my number one. That's where I think this argument kind of. Here's the thing, though, Latavius Murray is not, not a, a handcuff, handcuff because no, he, he has he has too much standalone and value. Was, see, you, and the draft capital is too high. Yes, that's way too high. Do you have a, a round where you would have to consider? I think double digit is probably handcuff range. Like well, Latavius oh, yeah, Murray, no, you're gonna have to grab in the seventh round this year. You know, yeah, that's would, like yeah, that's high not, draft. I was gonna say. But he's, I mean, as much as he's not a handcuff, like I get what you're saying, where he's going to produce anyway with just being that that second back in that system. Mm-hmm. But if, God forbid, Kamara goes down, he's, he's top 10 easily. He's yeah. easily going to, yeah, exactly. Yeah, one he's of a the good football player. Right. And what I was, what I was, trying, to, what I was trying to say was, mm-hmm. yeah, we, try we, and say we so. can't really define it because is uh, Latavius Murray, obviously we're not going to call him a handcuff because he's, he's a good player. He's going to have plenty of snaps during a football game. You want a fun stat? You want a big fact? Not really. I do. All right, I, I got do. a big fact. This is a tweet from uh, from FF underscore Kyle. So for as long as Sean Payton's been the head coach of the Saints, so that's from 2006 to the present day, that team, so the Saints, the backup running back has never averaged less than eight PPR fantasy points per game in a season. So high floor, high ceiling, so he's, he's, and he's, he's, Murray. And to that point, yeah, like I made a video last week or two weeks ago that I said like mid to late <laughs> round running backs with like league winning upside. Latavius right. was the first guy I listed on there because since Kamara has come into the league the last two years, Ingram has averaged 16 touches a game. Yeah. And he's had like 35 10 zone carries over mm-hmm. the last two years. So that role in itself is is an absurd role because you could literally start Latavius Murray say, in deep, your flex spot on a weekly leagues, basis. Deeper leagues, you're playing Latavius Murray. He's, Latavius can catch too. Flavius can he can, he, he can he can play. He's he, Mark Ingram. He's he, Mark Ingram with more breakaway speed. Yeah, 2015, right. he had like he caught like over 40 balls, but like his percentage, his catch rate with the Raiders, he was 76 and a half percent, and with the Vikings, 86 percent. Yeah. So like you could sit like Kirk Cousins is probably a little upgrade from Derek Carr, so his catch rate went up. Now with Drew Brees, I'm sure it's probably going to be around that 86 percent, if not higher. All right. So let's talk, about, so let's talk about some legit. See, this is the problem, too. Uh, like well, like Gurley over the last couple of years. And Gurley, even now, right? If you're expecting some kind of knee injury with, with the whole thing going on with Gurley, he gets hurt. People are starting to draft Darrell Henderson in like He's the fifth, sixth round. Yeah, He's going seven, super, six. super fucking early. The problem is, if he goes down, Darrell Henderson's not getting the Todd Gurley workload. No, Malcolm it's Brown, Malcolm Brown and, and Darrell Henderson. Yep. I will say, I don't like Alexander Madison on the Vikings, but he's someone who I could see a clear path because there's no one else really in that backfield besides like Mike and Boone. And with Dalvin who, Cook's history, you want to have some... If you're going to take Dalvin exactly. Cook, you want to have so the So Dalvin Cook is like kind of like the clearly featured back there, right? And if he gets hurt, they're probably going to have someone step in like we kind of saw with Latavius Murray last Isn't year. Isn't Amir Abdullah there too? Yeah. Get that, get that rolling again? Yeah, let's, Amir not, Abdullah? let's, let's not do that. Let's, right. not, let's not piss me off already. We're like <laughs> 10 right. minutes into the episode. <laughs> the man we've been preaching all preseason, Amir Abdullah, absolutely cut up the Jets. I think Alexander Madison is a legit handcuff to Dalvin Cook, and he's someone that you can get in like the 13th, 14th round because he's a rookie relatively mm-hmm. unknown coming out of a smaller school. That um, could be a solid keeper if you're in a keeper league. Yeah, I mean, I, they, they'll still Dalvin have Dalvin Cook, dies, Cook so yeah. I don't think they're going to yeah, do anything die. with that. But. You never know. Dude, running backs have short shelf lives. I, I mean, f- like physically die, literally? or I mean, like kind of back there die, like just in fantasy, the cemetery. fantasy die. Okay, what else have we got for handcuffs? Anything else? <laughs> so I got um, Ryquel Armstead for the Jaguars. Now, the main reason for this one is because Fournette's he's been banged up his entire career. He has not been healthy, so... That's that's the, and he's got that lingering injury that Jesse, Dr. Jesse Moore said right about the ligaments in his ankles and everything. Yeah. So, Ryquell Armstead is a very very similar back to uh, Leonard Fournette. He's a he's a downhill violent runner. He's got the same style. So I think they they drafted him knowing like listen Leonard hasn't been there for us every single game. We need someone who's gonna keep that same style of run going because the Jaguars like to pound the rock. Mm-hmm. So I really like Ryquell Armstead just because I don't think Fournette's gonna even play the whole year anyway. And if you're a guy who likes Fournette and you draft him in the third or fourth round, you better draft his yeah, his handcuff. Right. Half. This is the year that, like, I'm not going to be touching Fournette, but if you're going to draft Fournette, you obviously know the injury concerns are massive. And Raquel Armstead, yeah, like like you said, he's 
Um, very similar size. He's like 5'11", 220, 225. So he's got that workhorse Speaking stature. Second fastest 40 time. 4'4", 540, yeah. Fast. Which puts him in like the 94th percentile for weight adjusted speed score. So mm-hmm. he's up there with like the Leonard Fournette in that size. The one thing, though, he is uh, missing like all of camp right now with a hamstring injury. So okay, that's so watch that. Yeah, so that's a that's a big concern of mine. Because rookies, with rookies, you never – they're always in camp battles, right? Yep. So at any time misses a – Massive and and injuries like that lingers. So. Right, exactly. This at this early in the off season, I'm not too worried about it. Like if something happens in August, then I'm yeah. Gonna be like, when when, probably the, off when my your draft drafts board, come around, keep an eye on that. Yeah, see how he's recovered. Yeah, because if they miss time training camp preseason, it takes coaches take usually a long time to bring them back in. So yeah. So dude, to be honest with you, I, I, there's not many straight handcuffs. I I see. Like I'm thinking, you know, with James Conner, you have Jalen Samuels, but he's like, also he going to probably he's get gonna, some work. He's going like, to he's going to get some work, and like Benny Snell will probably get some work too if James Conner's goes down. Um, I mean, you look at the Broncos are just they're they're going to have two running backs both drafted yeah, in the top have, eight rounds. Um, like the Buccaneers, they they don't have a clear top running back. Yeah, the their Niners starter have could three be running backs. Yeah, who do knows? You, do you fear some uh, some rust and? Some possible tweaking going on from Le'Veon him. Bell. Uh, that's little, interesting. Elijah McGuire action. Dude, I like Elijah a so little why? bit. He's a good ball player. I like yeah, Elijah. More for just like, I don't even know if I like trust Le'Veon. Well, to, no, that's, who else did they I'm sign? Did they sign someone like, kind of recently? Did, no, I thought they brought back uh, Bilal Powell. Yeah, but I, yeah, yeah Bilal Powell's back. And he, he's been like, he's, he's been like my, I have really tried to, to root for him and like draft him. Mm-hmm. Last year was was where I really thought he was going to actually do it. He's not a fantasy this. stud. He's just a he solid do it. Like, no, he running back in the NFL, it. but he's not going to give you fantasy But production. I like Elijah Maguire. He has spurts. He's Yeah, he's Elijah Maguire is actually a good ball player. He's someone I would keep my eye on if I was a Le'Veon Bell owner. Yeah, and I, 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 you know what? He he is someone that you could probably consider an actual handcuff because he will get almost no time if Le'Veon Bell is healthy. No, no. But if Le'Veon he's out, Elijah Maguire probably is getting 15 Fifteen plus touches a game. Oh, the, Ty Montgomery is the other guy that oh, brought right. in. Yeah, no. So he yeah, might he no. might eat into some of the passing work. But Man, I think Elijah McGuire is the handcuff to own. Ty that. Montgomery should be cut. So when you think of handcuffs, I think like you have to look at. The, so let's go the top four backs. So Quan Barkley, you think his backup is Gallman, not Rod Smith? Uh, I do. Yeah. So, but okay. even that, like, just to, the, they, the, I'm the, sorry, they signed Rod Smith for a reason, <clears throat> and Rod Smith can play, but Wayne Gallman can play too. That's the problem is with Saquon. Is Saquon so much better than those guys behind him that? They're, they if they step into that role, they're not going to give you what Saquon's giving you. No, not so on like, the Giants, yeah. Like, and actually, yeah, it's not even like, like do you they even would be want like a handcuff him? Flex and their offense, yeah. their offense would change completely. They yeah. would start throwing the ball. Right. They're not running the ball like they yeah. would And that's Saquon. the other thing. The fact that we don't know, that that's the problem with handcuffs, is the fact that we, we're we arguing between Wayne Gallman and Rod Smith. Like They could both be So used. you can't draft either of them because the fact that we don't know for sure. They are undraftable. They're a guy, if Saquon goes down, you could spend some fab. I, I mean, I wouldn't explode. Yeah, but keep that's an like eye. The, that's the only scenario. So no. Take yeah. Him. So Saquon. Okay. Get number two back. Out. We have Kamara. We already talked about Latavius. Christian yes. McCaffrey. Now yeah, I have him on my list because this is interesting backfield. Uh, on the depth chart right now is Cameron's, Cameron. Cameron Payne. Payne, who's been there for like ever. They drafted this kid Jordan Scarlett. Jordan Scarlett. Like yeah. a, the next. Yeah. Like they're all just like every one of their talents are just redundant to Christian McCaffrey. So they're another like you know b- b- backfield where it's not you don't have a clear cut uh, handcuff behind him. Yep. Zeke. Uh, so who's behind Zeke? Okay, so Zeke's actually a very Zeke, interesting I like one because they got the rookie uh, as a po- Tony. They have two: Tony Pollard and they have Mike Weber from Ohio Mike State. Weber, He's yeah. also a really good size, speed athlete. But I think Mike Weber has missed most of camp with an injury too. But Tony Pollard is a kid from Memphis. Yep. Who he was hand- he's great. The Miles Sanders of. Did Miles, Gendis, right? Yes, yes, yes. So, so he sat behind uh, Darrell Henderson, and Darrell Henderson is obviously scoring like twenty-five touchdowns a season. So you don't hear anything about Tony Pollard. His talents were hidden. Exactly, yeah. his talents were hidden. But like he was someone who was catching, you know, 30, 40 passes a game, and they're talking about using him as like a weapon. But again, say 30, 40 catches a game uh, a year. Sorry, like a college season. Say, that's insane. <laughs> pretty, pretty damn good. <laughs> yeah, he's someone if they if they use him correctly. Um, he could be very interesting, but at, at the same time, they said like Tavon Austin was going to get 25 touches a game yeah, last year, so uh, it, it's hard to buy into into the what what they're saying with Tony Pollard. But if you look at him as just like an athlete, man, he's four five two forty, most comparable to Kenyon Drake on player profile, six foot two ten, so he's got like size. Mm-hmm. He's probably the back to own if I'm going to draft someone behind Zeke. And Zeke is someone that normally, you know, if you are drafting Zeke, I would probably like to have his backup because he has, just because he has such volume. He has such a defined role, yeah. yeah and whoever yeah. takes over that is going to get a and lot of work. And it's a solid offensive line. And he's, so. he's yeah. had a few years now, big, 
Big workloads. He, they could break down a few games here and there. Nah, he's yeah, so and I'm then, not saying he's going to. Bro. He's fucking solid, bro. That's another good point, though. You said with uh, with Zeke, like the the line is solid, the offense is solid, and we were talking about like if you're gonna draft a handcuff, make sure it's on a good team because yeah. Oh, yeah. again, the reason they're backups is because they're backups. You're not drafting Miami's backup. You're exactly. Not, you know, it's not exactly. Oh yeah, like Kalen Balage and like Kenyon Drake are another one where it's yeah, like no, yeah. Balage is like the handcuff. See, like, but I like, almost look at like Kenyon Drake as like a handcuff for like a Zeke. Like I know they're not the same, but like. I would mean? try and, like, if I have, uh, you know, say I draft Zeke in the first round, I get, like, a Joe Mixon or T- Dalvin Cook in the second, and then those are my two starting running backs. Yeah. I'm going to try and get a guy like a Kenyon Drake, another starting running back on a team that has some potential to be, like, my handcuff because they're not going to start every week on my team. Yeah. But, you know, if Saquon goes down, I'll put Kenyon Drake. In. Oh! <laughs> but you know what I'm saying. No, Take no. A, another team. We have get, no idea. That's... People, you know what I'm saying, and you're, I, and you. So what you're saying? So let's let's wrap this up a little bit. But you, you're targeting C.J. Anderson. That's, I said starting running back, <laughs> idiot. That's uh, another interesting backfield. I think Carryon's going to dominate touches. C.J. Anderson. We're actually. I'm not going to talk about C.J. Anderson. Let's move on to the next question. <laughs> I, got, I got one more. I want to I talk Go. about because it's a very interesting backfield as well. The uh, the Ravens. So it's a it's a run heavy uh, team, a run heavy runs. offense. A lot of runs. Mark Ingram is obviously the starter right now. <clears throat> now. Who is the actual handcuff? Because they run the ball a lot. So if you're going to draft Mark Ingram, Mark Ingram, you want to make sure you have, you know, who's going to take his place if he goes down. So is it Gus Edwards or is it Justice Hill? That's the thing. They use they've used a, a committee over the last couple of years. Yes. And like th- th- this Kenneth is the point. It's like if you don't know who the handcuff is, it's not worth drafting. When was the anyone. last time they had a sustainable like workhorse net? But like Jamal Lewis. Well, Gus Edwards Ray had Rice. you know he only played eleven games last year, but and, and only seven as the feature back, and he didn't catch a single fucking pass over like he, five games he, though. So, but he had two targets, two receptions, one touchdown. So like he didn't have like the opportunity. Not yeah, saying he has he great hands, it, probably. But, but Justice Hill is two the, targets, two receptions. Justice Hill is the only Ravens running back I'm drafting this year in drafts because you can so get you, him in like the 14th or 15th round. And and you, I don't uh, consider him a handcuff because no. even I think best case scenario, Justice Hill does not top on average more than like 14 touches a game, even if Mark Ingram gets hurt. I don't even know if he'd. I think Gus Edwards would be the guy. I hate Gus Edwards. Gus Edwards and Mark Ingram are going to play a similar role no matter which one are on the field. They're exactly. going to get a lot so of early Mark down work. If goes he, down, I think Gus will fill his shoes more while and Justice I, will take maybe third down. I don't even know. Justice will. I think Justice Hill is going to get work with Ingram there, and I think uh, I think it's going to be similar to Melvin Gordon in San Diego. Um, where if so, so like Eckler gets 10 to 12 touches a game normally, right? Mm-hmm. If Melvin Gordon goes down, Eckler doesn't get 25 touches. He goes from 10 to 12 to like 12 to 15, 15. right? Tell so me it, about it. It's an upgrade. It's an upgrade, but it's not necessarily handcuff. And that's what I would imagine seeing. Like, I think Justice Hill will get maybe eight to 10 touches a game. Ingram goes down. Maybe that goes 10 to 14 or something. I got, like I got, one, I got one more, one more quick one. The Redskins. Because is Geist the starter? Bro, I don't even know what to make out of this. Right? Uh, I'm, I'm, a, I'm, I'm, I'm off Geist. Now that right? like, all this, I don't all want him at all. Stuff, yeah, I'm I just don't think he'll be full strength until like and then, two months. Dude, into the, the next season. guy in their depth chart is Adrian Peterson. It's Adrian Peterson. Like he, it's Chris he rushed, Thompson is he, now there. He played, oh. he played 16 games last year. Rushed for over a thousand yards. Like he's going to rush for two thousand this year. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Like is he? Well, I wouldn't he's shot. going for every. Who, who's surprised. not going for two thousand yards this year? Adrian Peterson, Amari Cooper, Zeke. like Zeke. Zeke, like, would Zeke you, might actually rush. I'd almost rather draft year. Adrian oh. Peterson like in like the fifteenth round than no. even take Geis. Dude, he, he was he literally fell apart <laughs> in the second half of the year. Like he had nothing in the tank nah. left. He's gonna give you a good seven hundred yards this year. That's a, ha, there's no such thing as a good seven hundred yards in one yards. game. <laughs> <laughs> well, when you say it like I'm that, I'm so pissed. <laughs> yeah, I'm off that Geis train too, and it's such a shame. I'm just getting out of the Redskins backfield. That's yeah, I'm might, getting away from that whole team. Sh- the whole yeah. shit show. There's nothing on there that that enticing. Maybe I'll pick, take Bryce Love for a dynasty or something. That's it. Yeah. So he, yeah, he's intriguing for dynasty. I mean, Geis is in, intriguing for dynasty. Absolutely. Too. Stash him out. Yeah. yeah. All right. Wait, well, so, he was. The, I drafted him in E down E Town last year with the hopes of, of keeping him, him yeah. in this year. Oh yeah. When did you get him? Like the last the 12th, round, twelfth, thirteenth round. Yeah, so it was very late. I was looking at my dude. My, my I had Galladay, Chubb, Geis, dude, all three. I I, I'm looking from. at my keepers again, dude. I'm, it's getting fucking confusing. I was because carry on. I can keep him for a ninth, or I can keep Aaron Jones for like a thirteenth. And I'm like, the, the, I the, think there might be more value in. Uh, I know, I know. Like I love carry on, but like the more I think about Jones, I'm like maybe you know even if they use him in a, a Kamara type role. What? See what George did? No. He posted it on what is this on eBay for fifty million dollars? <laughs> five million. Buy it now for five million. See fifty thousand starting bid. Buy it now for five million. Could you imagine? Hey, this painting up here, this beautiful fade the public painting that Max did really drunk Saturday morning at four a.m. is on sale on eBay. 
five thousand dollars starting bid. Five million Fucking dollars. steal right now. Hold on. Is it five thousand or five million? I'm so bad at math. Oh, no, it's it's fit to, you don't have to. That's you don't five have to million. Know, you don't have to know math to read. That's my. That's million, right? Buy it now, five million. That's five million. Starting bid is fifty thousand. Oh my god. I like how George, what George wrote. Fade the public. B D G E art. One of one. <laughs> you want to own a piece of U.S.? No. World history dated between three hundred B.C. and this past Saturday. This timeless piece of art and history can be added to your trash collection. <laughs> 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 Yo, uh, so if you buy it now, you Van can throw Gogh's. it into the garbage by Tuesday. <laughs> Ship with USPS priority man. I hope some <laughs> some rich dumbass is on eBay hammered right now. And just I told you, it. dude. Imagine that'd be fucking sick. We should start releasing these uh, at like on weekend nights, yeah, so that absolutely. anyone who watches it is fucking hammered. We start doing it for reasonable amounts, though. Five million might be a little excessive. Disagree. <laughs> Dude, disagree. speaking of Saturday, I, I did you have fun at the party? You got a blast. You guys, you weren't there for that long, but I feel like I we, had a fucking. Well, it was came, really we fun for that. We saw, we conquered, we conquered. Hell yeah, dude! Had so much fun. I was drinking wine at the bottle. Hell yeah, we haven't done that in a while. I got oh. you to take shots of tequila. <laughs> that, <laughs> that was like <laughs> honestly, your reaction was worse Saturday. I, I was bad. I know. How about I the How about like, the band on the roof, bro? They were so. good. Parlors were good as they fuck. They were so good. They were real good. I wanted them to start singing some Billy Idol, but of course you did. <laughs> Beggars can't be choosers. And then I tried begging my girlfriend to go to the karaoke bar with me at like twelve thirty. Yeah, you started. It wasn't half. You like literally started. What a pouting. shocker! You were pouting. I <laughs> you were in the middle of the party. I don't want to go to karaoke. I was like, "Are you a fucking child?" I wanted to go so bad, so bad, and I, <laughs> like, and I was, we were like about to leave the party, and that was the only way I convinced you to like come downstairs. <laughs> was just like, "Yo, we're going to karaoke." And as soon as we got outside, I ran to go get the, a bike, a city bike, and bike home. I'm so <laughs> mad at Wilson for even bringing that up. What? Oh, karaoke? Yeah, he goes, dude, there's a karaoke bar down the street. I didn't I, even know about jaw, that my bar. My jaw dropped. Yeah, I was like, please like, don't bring no it up. No way. I just wanted to go sing one Billy Idol song, go. Like, that's not that crazy. Yeah, it is, because you do it all the time. That's ridiculous. All right, at 704, keep pounding. What y'all's, philo- <laughs> what y'all's <laughs> philosophy are going into a draft? Drafting from a certain position, like Nick at 105, Snacks at pick 109, and Animal at pick 112. So... so I don't want to talk about this. The question... <laughs> well, you're not picking at 105. No, I don't want to talk... I probably might be picking Drafting at, at a certain year. position. So switch to 5 and 9. So, okay. So, we actually can, like, talk about this because... Because our, our big league, the E-Town Get Down, we are in together. And this year, I believe you're probably going to have the 103, right? Or something? Yeah, so I'm going for anywhere from the 101 to the 103. Right. So, he's going to have a top three pick. Me and Snacks are going to be at the end of the round. It's only a 10-team league. So, we're going to be probably somewhere between 7 and 10, both of us. Love that. Um, now I, I'll be honest, like my, my draft strategy will change based on, well, one, I know I'm going to be able to keep either carry on Johnson, Aaron Jones, or like even Robert Woods in the 15th is not a bad keeper, but I'll probably take one of the running backs. And based on that, like if you're in a keeper league, you could take more chances. Normally I hate drafting like a tight end early. Right. But I'll be maybe at like the 12 or 13. And if, say, maybe Kelsey falls to me at 12 or 13, I'd think about it because I already have a running back rather yeah. than having to use that 13th pick on Mixon or Dalvin Cook or something like that, right? Yep. So I think depending on how your setup is, um, you start looking at it that way. But in terms of like prepping for the draft, what do you got? What's like your mindset going yeah, into it? I'm, is it I, more like knowing the players in the draft or mock drafting or? So it's a, it's a mix of mock drafts and then kind of knowing your league. Mm-hmm. So like, right. you, and then, you know, for me, it's really like, it, what, what kind of what kind of years is it like a running back heavy year? Is it a wide receiver like like this year? I, I I want a running back in the first round. That's it. I want a running back in the first round. I mean, you year. got a top three pick, so you're straight. Well, even if yeah. I had the you know the 109, I'm trying to get I'm trying to get mixed and I'm trying to get you know one of yeah. those guys at the end of that first at, round. I'm trying to get a running back. It almost it almost seems to me though, the more I look at it, that like you always play the board. I always you got to play the board. You always play. It the almost board. feels like the wide receivers are safer at the se- in the back half. Later end, that's where round. I'm aiming for because I'm gonna take. I'm going to take a Devontae Adams over a Mixon type because yeah, I think at 109, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking slam dunk, Devontae Carson Adams is gone already. That's why I'm saying I'm, I'm starting to think that way too. Like he's going to be gone by 106, 107, Devontae Adams. I don't think in our league he will. You're going to get, you're going to have. Holmes is going to go before that. That's true because we're in a super flex now. Dude, I, I would, I, I could see so Mahomes it, falling. I could Cla- see Mahomes dropping. So could I, but I, I'm telling I really think there's going to be something crazy that happens 
in that first round. And that's the other thing. If you're drafting with people that you know, especially I'm going based off like this, that's... we'll know our draft order, right? And I'll know, like, okay, like, Steve is at 106, so yeah. I can expect something fucking really dumb out of him. Or, or Eric I mean? might take, like, Mike Glennon at seven. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So it, it's a mix you between gotta expect curveballs. prepping, and it's a mix between, like, what your roster is, a mix between, like, knowing the people that are drafting before you, and also, like, looking at it, you know, I might want a player at 108, can I can I grab him at 112? I would literally be like, okay, well, Snacks has two picks before me. So do I think he's going to use one of those on him? And I know, like, this other person is also before me. What are his tendencies? Maybe I'll look back at, yeah, like, or Deech's he, board and be like, does he normally go, like, is he someone that would go tight end yeah. early? Or does he has he never done that before? You yeah, know what I mean? and you could even just look at, like, who, who were their first two picks? Did they already take two wide receivers? Do you want a running back? Like they're probably gonna take a running back next, so maybe you yeah, know, well, get your well, guy once now. You get, once you get more you know? into the draft, then you could really go based off others' teams. But from the back end, where I'm, where this guy like say snacks one or nine, I'm gonna target that wide that that wide receiver one, whether it's Julio Devante. Whoever would you it is. normally go with like? Yeah, uh, that's that's what I would. I would well, say you say you're gonna have two picks within like three picks, right. right? Are you like looking to combine upside with safety? Like if you grab a D Hop or Devonte Adams, obviously that's like super safe pick, right? On the next pick, are you looking to like overall is your early round draft strategies to minimize risk, or are you looking for like that that league winning guy with the upside too? I I probably am minimizing risk. I mean, it's a little bit of both. It, yeah. it really does change every year. Yeah. Like last year, mm-hmm. I wanted I wanted the top wide receiver, I wanted a top running back, and Melvin Gordon fell into my lap on the way back. Antonio Brown was right there, so I thought I made out like a bandit. Right. And you have wide receiver one and an RB one, and you're you're set. Like you don't have to worry about where your production is coming up from there. But again, every year is different. If I could, like you said, if I could have Devonte and, and and an Odell or Devonte and Michael Tom, whatever that combination of those like four guys, like a Julio. Yeah. It's kind of hard to say no, and especially where I'm at, I really didn't want to bring this up because. But whatever, yeah, I have the, Nick The Ch- problem with us is like this is a high stakes league and we all want to yeah, win. This I is the first I'm year that we're going to be give anything away, but it's mm. it, you know, it just it kind of helps like this yeah. I have a pretty Nick Chubb I'm keeping for like a 10th round pick. That's yeah. a great safety so, blanket. It's a yeah. great safety Knowing blanket. that you don't have to reach for a risky running exactly. back early. And I yeah. know for at least at least the first half of the year and I think the whole season he's going to be a stud. I'm a big believer in him. So if I wanted to, I could really stack my fucking box and go wide receiver wide receiver and just be Studded See, out now, right there. If you didn't have that that cushion of Nick Chubb, are you exactly. gonna go wide receiver, wide receiver? I would depend on how how I the feel board like that would be like. Yeah, and you also have to look at you, you know you're what, at the end there, so you're gonna wait for him to come back. What running backs are gonna be available for you in the third round? Like it's that's the that's the tough part. Like the, it's huge. We're you're gonna be stuck with only, like the Fournette and the we're only know, a ten team. Derrick right. Henry. Decision. We're only a ten teamer. So like if it's twelve, then I we have a little bit more leeway, right? Yeah, there's like like five or six picks that we don't have to worry about happening between us. But at the same time. Since we have a keeper, and speaking on this, because we didn't, we forgot to talk about keepers in last week's commissioner episode. Yeah, I and I've that. Uh, I've seen a few comments and got a few tweets like, "What are your guys' keeper rules?" So we've mixed it around a lot, but what we have it settled on right now is anyone picked in the year prior in the tenth round or later can be kept the following year. They didn't have to have been picked by you. So say I pick player X in round eleven, I drop him in week five. Animal picks him up in week eight, and he finishes it with that player on his roster, can he can keep him that following year for the round in front of it. So if he was drafted round 11, he's going to lose his round 10 pick with that player going in the spot. There are no free agents allowed to be kept. So it's, it's he has to be drafted. It's clear cut. So it's round 10 or later, no free agents. I think that's the best way to uh, maximize the amount of fun that you have on draft night because if you're going earlier, you know, sixth round, fifth round, fourth round keepers or people that do like first and second round, that takes a lot of the fun players off the board. Yep. You know? the, the most fun part of the year. If the you're doing just a season year, long, it's draft yeah, night. exactly. Yes. It's draft night. What if it's redraft season long? If it, there's no point in and using. I, I always try to have. Why am I showing up to a draft? I always try to have like one or two two guys that I know I'm going to try and get in like the 15th you ta- and you, round that I know a, could be a, a keeper. You target, guys, you target guys later on, and by like the 13th, 14th round, you're just scrambling through Dude, your I notes, drafted through your rankings. You Marlon Googling. Mack, his rookie year, I had to write him in. They didn't even have his sticker. I was, I was a year early, but yeah, you were a year early. And I, and if you go back to the E-Town get down draft, I, I did a lot. One of the confession camps I had right before my pick of carry on in the 10th. I was like, I was like, I'm so fucking pumped. He fell to me. He's like, I'm going to grab carry on right now in the 10th and be able to keep him because he's going to be a second round pick by this time next year. Mm-hmm. It's not going to be a second round pick, but you know, you get the point. It's yeah, like close. It, it, it's fun because it's a good um, combination of 
not letting all the good players go off the board, but rewarding the people that, you know, have good draft picks in the 10th, 11th, 12th round. Because you're not getting, like, amazing players there. But if you're smart and savvy, you will get some good keepers. So yeah. You um, read up on, guys, like, maybe a rookie or two. You read up on college that you like, that you've seen him play, that you take a chance on him later mm-hmm. on. Not, you know, the big-name rookies or somebody like that. Like like a David Johnson. That's what I did with David Johnson a few exactly, years ago. Yeah. You're too late. And my dumbass dropped him. And I think there's a question. <laughs> yeah. What was your biggest mistake? That was probably it. I dropped him for... A guy I needed to start. I was in a playoff race. I was in the playoffs. Playoffs? And I needed somebody to play, so I dropped David Johnson. Deej picks him up, has him on his roster by year's end, keeps him next year, dominates the league. Dominates yeah. the league. Isn't a fucking understatement. Yeah, so keepers, we've experimented with multiple players. We've done like one, two, whatever, and we've done earlier rounds, but this is the best we found. I'm pretty happy with where we have it. Yeah. And honestly, I would bring up the rule to just nix keepers altogether. Um, in this this offseason, we'll see how that goes. I don't really care. I'm, I usually end up with like one or two really good keepers to choose from. But you know, like we said, the draft night is always the funnest night, so I'm cool having a completely free board. Yeah, I, that's how it should be. Those top guys mm. should be there. So yeah, back to what uh, the question at hand too, and it's like also not only knowing your keeper, like me having a little bit uh, more leeway, knowing I'm going to be able to keep a top running back. Also, the people that are drafting in front of you are going to be able to keep players, so you're looking at who they're keeping, right? Mm-hmm. So if Um, someone's on the turn between me and my next pick. I'm like, oh, okay, they already have a stud running back that they're keeping, so it's less likely that they use one of these picks on the running backs, you know, and it obviously doesn't work out perfectly, but there's a lot of different little tweaks that you can at least, it's always about the percentages. Or at least make yourself feel better with your decision, and then when it backfires, you could be like, ah, well, at least I had that. Yeah, at least I've (laughs) laid out the big facts on why (laughs) it it didn't work. You know, the analysis was on point. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's move on to the next question. Eric, at Hustle and Medit. Your biggest mistakes in fantasy throughout the years. Well, I just gave you mine. How yeah. much? How much time we got? <laughs> yeah. So I actually did a video of this like as soon as the 2018 season ended. Like my top 10 lessons learned. I will say first and foremost, like easily the biggest mistake that I made and I, I see most people make is just injury optimism. Just being like, yeah, this guy's going to be healthy now or once he's back once he's on the field he's going to be a stud mm-hmm. like we saw it with so many players last you year keep with like, taking the like same doug guys. baldwin this is the year this yeah. is the year yeah. like doug this baldwin was a perfect year. fucking example of like he told us he was injured and then Pete Carroll was like he'll be ready to go i fucking did it last year different league everyone does it injury optimism is so fucking real like people really think it's always going to work and for the most part it it, it just doesn't well work for like out. my entire fancy career i have been a guy where like if he's like any inkling of injury i'm like not on my board. Yeah. And then, like, all of a sudden, last year, I'm like, Doug Baldwin, he's tough. <laughs> like, yeah. He's no. tough. He's a, fucking, ball. He's a, he's a football a, guy. It's like the fourth round. It's just totally. It, it's like really just taking every injury into context. It's like we have so much data on, like, return timetables, right? So we know that, like, Cooper Cup, A.J. Green all had very serious surgeries in, like, week 11, 12, 13 with 9 to 12-month recovery timetables, meaning when they say they're going to be ready for training camp in the beginning of fucking July, that's not true. Big lies. You know what I mean? So when these players. And, and and the problem is that a lot of these players are like elite athletes. They don't want to sit on their asses for 12 months. So they rush back, giving themselves a much higher injury, re-injury risk. Down the line, yep. Yeah, so I would say injury optimism is definitely one of the uh, the biggest problems that I've seen. People read into uh, like mini camp reports way too much. Way too much. Like coach, it's all coach speak. This guy, love him. Breakout year. Yeah. We're going to get him the ball. We're going to get it to him in space. He's really flashing he, on the field. That's a good Gaga point. Out of it. That's a good point. Um, I think, I think where you have to start looking at that is when you start seeing reports. Like you, when there's smoke, there's fire. When you see yeah. beat reporters, coaches, players, teammates all saying Repeatedly it throughout, more, you know, yeah. from different yeah. sources, different angles, all saying the same thing. Then eventually that starts piling up and you're like, mm-hmm. okay, maybe there's something here. And in you, when you see it in front of your eyes, when preseason starts, well, yeah, you're not drafting, you better exactly. not be drafting oh, until preseason's another good, yeah, I have another good until point preseason's to, over. Yep. Another good point on like that. You should be, you know, if you can. Week three. Well, I know what like college kids they go back to school and if yeah, they want to do it live, they, you know they they want to be together. Can't really do it, but if you're drafting online, do it Labor Day. It's the Monday yeah. before the football season starts. If you're no doing one's it got live, work. Yeah. If you're doing it live, do it. Li- We've done it Labor yeah. Day the last no, like, six years now. It's the best way to do it. So yeah. that's, that's national mistake. National draft league wide for preseason building on preseason. I think one big advantage you can get over your teammates is teams. Okay, so like. The preseason in general, how players play and their stats don't matter to me. What really matters is the snap count with the first team. Um, And this information is out there for you guys to devour. And it's not, it's a pretty new thing where, you know, player, people are 
counting snap counts with the first teams. And I think it's thank, thanks to fantasy football and the, and the fantasy football like Twitter community pretty much. But like last year, we saw throughout the preseason that Christian McCaffrey was getting 97% of the snaps throughout all the preseason games with the first team. And you're like, okay, no one else is touching the ball in the backfield. So he's going to be the guy. Right. So there was question marks yeah. between like CJ Anderson and blah, blah, blah throughout the preseason last year. But, you know, when it's when, understandable, when the coaches start putting out their <laughs> when the coaches start putting out their first team, you know, during the preseason, that's who they want to get reps with. You know, that's who the starters are. So my biggest thing is like, look at snap counts in the preseason. That is the biggest teller to who is actually in the starting offense. So that will help you decide and decipher between running back by committees. There's a reason that you draft that you didn't draft Ronald Jones last year because he got like fucking four snaps with the first team throughout the entire preseason. Yeah, there was nothing you go on there. Yeah, so you can like pretend to have the upside there, but if you actually looked at any of the snap counts or looked at any of the numbers behind it in preseason, I don't look at stats, I don't look at box scores because that doesn't do anything for you. Mm-hmm. But I, I think Dude, like... Watch the games too. Watch and yeah. see yeah. see what they're doing. How are they being used in the game? Just because you have a snap count, you don't know what they're doing while they're on the field. Mm-hmm. Got to watch it. I remember, I'll, I'll talk about this forever because it's one of my proudest moments. I watched the Redskins preseason game with RG3 and Alfred Morris and I saw Alfred Morris have a great game, bust off of like a 25-yard run. You just love and these I fat fucking, fucking drafted him the next like two days. Like the right after that, we had the draft and I drafted him late. Why were you drafting when preseason was going on? I was, just told you you shouldn't be doing that. I said like two it was week three preseason was right after. Just kidding. You fucking Why idiot. You get, so you're, start, <laughs> you're starting to get a little defensive. Yeah. I have yeah. to. I'm a little nervous. I got to fucking protect my ground. He's an animal. Jesus Christ. This is my it's dungeon. It's his nature. It is your dungeon. So I also, if we're still on biggest mistakes, yeah, I drafted. Yeah. Um, I love this. Let's go. I drafted a kicker in the ninth round one year, Matt Prater. Not right. with you guys. Oh, you're you're going to get to the other. Mistakes, okay, because right? you also did a defense in like the eighth round or ninth round but last year. And then I too. also drafted the Jaguars defense in the ninth round. So the ninth round, just for some reason. That was I, last year. That was last what year. What else did you do last year? Well, that's not a huge mistake. Listen, I traded for Cream Hunt. I stand by that trade. It was a good trade. I you didn't know he morals? was going to be fucking. Are you a good. Would you consider yourself a good person? What did you trade him for? I uh, gave up a second round pick in redraft. So for the record, don't trade those. They're valuable. You think? You um, <laughs> you want to keep those. And that's why I think it was a mistake. It turned out to be a mistake, yes. I think it was a mistake no matter what. But at the time, Unless it wasn't. Unless you won the championship, I which would I don't have. think you would have. You're a fucking idiot. Okay. I, I also, outscored everyone the rest of the way with Damian Williams, not even Kareem buddy. Hunt. Stupid ass. Okay. See, you stupid <laughs> I know you're a little upset also, about what Jared Goff did to you. Also, uh, take it out on me. don't completely forget about ADP, but don't use that as like the end all be all. I say like get it's get your guys season. Yeah, yeah. Just get your fucking guys. Oh yeah, Always. there's the guy you want, but he's like his ADP is seven picks later, and you feel like you're reaching. It's not a reach. If it's like two rounds early, and you could wait another round, do that. You know, play strategically, understand your league and how they're drafting, especially when runs are made. What do you think about this? I heard this on the podcast the other day. Someone's saying that like. Uh, if you're at the back half, if you're at like the turn, right, you're the 10, 11 pick or something, it's difficult to, to pick that way because you don't get to draft based on value ever. No, right? you're, you have to take the guys because you know they're not coming back. So they yeah. think, so, that, so they were saying that sure. oh, starting yeah. the runs always is the best move because you don't let your your league like dictate when the runs start. But if you start the runs, like say you go back to back wide receivers yeah. or quarterback tight end, you start both of those runs right there. And People you start panicking. And you dictate. You it. control the narrative. That's a pretty interesting. You control, that's great. Yeah. It's interesting. I never even that, thought of it like that. It's yeah. true, but like, how control are you if you have to do that to stay in control? Like, you know, every draft, you're not, you're not really second, drafting your guy at that point. I don't even draft off, to win. I draft for fucking control. The, the second a tight end comes off the board, people start. I know, yeah, yeah, especially, especially super flex, like quarterbacks too. Quarter, yep. Yeah. Especially and a t- like a tight end because the, they're so premium. Like now. if you were to wait, like say you were like the tenth pick or whatever this year, right? And we saw like the first three or four quarterbacks go off the board in the first two rounds, and then you're at pick you know thirty, thirty one, and you take the two quarterbacks that start the next tier, you best believe the next two rounds are going to yeah. be like six or seven yep. quarterbacks. People right? start panicking like, oh shit, can, am I going to get a quarterback? And that's exactly. what take one now. you conceivably control what's yes. going to happen next. Yeah, mm-hmm. so I kind of like that. If you're picking at the turn, I think you have a little bit maybe more control than you think. It what, could what possibly if, backfire. What if it's already started like four picks before you? Now do you just kind of fade it and go a completely different route and ignore it? Interesting question. Uh, I don't. I don't know. Uh, it would have, at that it, point. I'd have to almost, take that into context. You know, everyone's kind of gone already. So like now, do you start your own? Well, the, starting up a new run, or are you just kind of going along with it? That I mean, I would assume that if the run started, maybe there's value at other positions there. So I, I think if you could start the run, then that means that you mm-hmm. kind of dictated it. But if not, then you're just kind of falling into the trap, and you're getting less value at, at the position that the run started at, right? Because you're getting a lesser 
part of that tier. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So I would probably zig, but it's completely needs to be taken into context. It's also you got to see who's on the board. You yeah. can't. Right. Exactly. You, uh, and don't don't draft for for if you play on Yahoo or, or wherever. Don't draft for your for your grade at the end of the draft. Yeah, dude, it, it blows my <laughs> mind for your the day. amount of tweets. Go get your guy. <laughs> that's yeah. that's craziness. Uh, the amount of tweets I get typically after people draft, like at the end of August and stuff, like, Yahoo graded me a C plus. I'm like, yo. Like, Bro, Yahoo doesn't know what the fuck that. they're talking about, so don't worry. That literally doesn't matter. It's it's just their projections calculating out which mm-hmm. teams will have, like, the highest score. It has fucking no fucking algorithm. If you dra- yeah. They- they, they might fucking have algorithms, bro. Fucking they might have Calvin Ridley like six one, and you draft him four twelve. I bet you it, that that's good, it's the person that made that down. algorithm never played football. So, fuck them. Have we? Have you ever played football? Yeah, I got jersey in my closet. <laughs> Eighth grade. Same dude. That was the one year I played. Panthers, bro. You know the yeah. Panthers? No, I was on fucking Emerson. Emerson Panthers. We're the Panthers, were Panthers in eighth grade. grade. Up until in high school. Grade, yeah. yeah. Oh, word. I guess I was. Oh, yeah, bro. Sick. I think they did away with that though. I think they made him. Well, yeah, dude. Now, have you probably. seen the new high, uh, baseball jerseys? They got a high school. They're sick. Yeah, They're fucking sick. See, I wasn't. Do you see the way them. they dress too? No. They all like. They got the flash. The, the oh yeah! Shout out yeah. Uh, state champs. State Emer- champs. Emerson baseball. Always, man. It's like fucking clockwork over yeah, here. Yeah, dude. That's it. what we do. We just win state championships. There's like, and there's, we, we churn even, out winners. Not even kidding. There's like 145 people that go to the high school. Yeah, that's that's, that's a ballpark. Now it's pretty close. We and we win state championships. We're like ten. Us three are ten percent of our fucking high school baseball. I got a ring. I didn't get a ring. Says, we won, we won the coach, but we won the state section. Oh yeah, <laughs> <Shut the fuck laughs> <up>. <laughs> let's move on to the next Please, one. Kyle on. Davis, what's up, Kyle? Kyle Davis sounds like a he backup says quarterback. number one. Look at the look at the hair. He I looks, think he rocks the orange hair way better. You than guys, you, to could, be honest, yeah. his is way more bright. He has you like know what? He's got a filter on that picture. No, he doesn't. I don't dude, think so. He's just uh, he's just a good looking guy. Dude, that is like orange fucking hair. He's just a good looking dude, it's man. Glossy, it's flossy. He smiles nice, wearing a nice suit. I would love to replace you with him. To be honest, number mm. one, best ever I'd moments be from the E Town Get Down League history. Two, one player you love to just absolutely crush ADP this year so much that you take them three rounds above ADP. Three, next go to Mark recipe. Where do we start? Start with the Mark. I gotta oh. go check a pitch. Okay. <laughs> oh, the fucking <laughs> disrespect on this week's episode. Mark recipe is simple. You take tequila, you take lime juice, and you take triple sec. There's also a fourth secret ingredient. Ingredient. Te- the the ratio is always two to one. But when you start off, always put a shitload of ice in the cup because you'll realize if you don't put enough ice in, you're going to have to make a marg that has like six shots of tequila. It's not, you know, it's not the worst problem to have, but put a hell of a lot of ice in. Then you go two shots of tequila, one shot triple sec, one shot lime juice, or, you know, depending on your level of intox- intoxicity. Is that the right word? Whatever level you're trying to get to. Toxicity. You know, a, a, Intox, intoxicated, like being drunk, not not actually toxic. Uh, anyways, so you go those four. There should be a fourth ingredient. It should be a splash of something with a little flavor. My go-to lately has been lemonade. Take a little splash of lemonade, maybe half a shot, maybe full shot if you a bitch, and throw it in there. Mix it up, throw a lime in there, and it's ready to go. It's perfecto. Let's get to number one. Best ever moments from the E-Town get down league history well was it the second year we started the punishment i think so because joe stood outside on the yeah. corner of the it might have been year. the third because josh hung was oh, josh in hung that didn't do his yeah that was my, my first league. yeah no that was my first year right yeah. right, right, right 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 okay so obviously you guys have heard we, we do punishments at the end of the year it keeps everybody involved which you should do absolutely hundred thousand ten percent but our fearless leader, Nick. I'm, I'm sorry, man. It's, it's facts. There's no getting good. around. There's no getting around it. You came in last. It was a fun time. And the yep. punishment was, yeah, we had to, we went out to a bar. All of us. It was a really great night. We went out to a bar, a, a comedy little comedy club in NYC. And Nick got up there, and we all sent him in jokes, <laughs> and he had to rip them off. And there were some atrocious jokes. Yeah. So atrocious. I, I had to do some. It was, uh, I felt. I felt for him because I can um, I can feel the no, embarrassment dude, coming from him. They took they've taken down like three or four of my vlogs for some reason bastards. because I have like random music I guess in it and they just like uh, take them down. Yeah, I was, I was kind of pissed, but um, I, yeah. So I never I I haven't you, laughed like that. So the punishment, so yeah, the punishment was uh, I had to do stand up at a uh, an open mic in New York City and the league mates wrote all the jokes for me. Yeah. 
So that I dude, I had a blast. Like after we were done oh, with that, too. I had such a high coming off that, oh, and yeah. I was like, dude, I kind of want to do this again. Yeah. And a week later, we, I was like, no we way. Went out, no, we, went out <laughs> we went out after that. We went out after that. We had a absolute oh yeah, we got blast. Do you guys housed. remember when we were there? I think it was. I don't know if it was before before you went up, maybe. The guy that came in hammered with like the fifth of vodka. Oh, the, the the veteran. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude, and he was like screaming in everyone's face. He was like calling like, people, I remember like that. names and shit. And then like oh, the man. woman who was like the MC like was like getting him. in his face, like sir, you gotta fucking go. And George and I looked at each other like, I thought you were right. gonna come back and kill. Like, all, all right, dude, this guy goes like we're, we're George and I like this ready to stand up. Like, all right, we're taking him out. Like, right, if this yeah. fucking guy does something, Damn. George wasn't gonna do and then, shit. I yeah. must have drank a lot that night, dude. That guy was nuts. He was going crazy, like cursing, calling people names and shit. And yeah, I'm pretty sure he called me a cunt. I was like, he probably did. I think that means he liked me to be honest yeah. well that's we that's how you know yeah that's a compliment in our and eyes. the one guy when we walked in there uh asked us if we were a fantasy football crew because they were like I, I mean we have stand-ups come in for like open mic night as a punishment all the time it's like 10 white guys that's immediately how we know <laughs> yeah. it's, yeah. It's hey, fantasy you, football could tell, you could tell the crowd was like like kind of mellow they were just it was there to like laugh new york uh, we came in we after we crowd. pre-gamed a little bit we came in ah, 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 yeah, it was yeah. just it was it was a mess and it was it was a great we, night. We for, were Jersey loud. It was you know that's that's true, but it was a great night for the E Town Get Down crew. What what about you? What, what's your you've you've only been here a few years. Yeah, so that, this was a hard one for me. I didn't have anything that really stuck out. That was like one of the you know one of the better moments. Um, as for like seeing like. I don't really have one. I have another one, real quick. Yeah, I'm sorry. go ahead. I, 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 there's just so many great ones. Um, this has to do with one of our our league mates. Um, every year we, on Labor Day, I go into that draft asking myself, "What wild shit is Eric gonna do?" <laughs> <laughs> Agreed. This is the guy. <laughs> he rattles off like three <laughs> kickers in a row yeah. during the draft. He, he legitimately drafted. Well, he drafted four defenses the other year with like, he was and like two three kickers. defenses, two kickers. He drafted Mike Glennon. He, he drafted Teddy Bridgewater last Teddy. year because he thinks it's gonna be a keeper. But keep in mind, he's paying like four hundred dollars to do this. <laughs> <laughs> like that's the fucked up part. I also think one of my favorite. Well, yeah. not. I don't think we've seen this come to fruition yet, but this year is going to be big because you guys are finally fully fucking invested. The confession cam at our oh, at yeah. our vlog is going to be Love absolutely. That. Last year, monstrous. Steve pretty much owned that. That was like kind of all Steve. Hey, what's up, America? How are you? Just want to reintroduce myself. This year, I am Team Mom Spaghetti. My knees were weak. My arms were heavy. There was vomit on my sword already. Um, but yeah, I just want to reintroduce myself. Uh, Steve One Chain, Steve from the Bird. Um, ready to go this year after round two. I have Tom Brady and Kareem Hunt. I wasn't expecting that duo. My God, do I love it. Steve's, I love Steve, having Steve in this. Like, kept coming back. He's like, oh, hey, what's up? I'm back again. And uh, so I just took this guy. So I would implement that, actually. That's that. something I would do even if you don't videotape your fucking live drafts. Have a camera in the corner yeah. that you guys, uh, you could do a confession cam. Like, imagine the real world. And after someone makes a pick, like, you can go talk shit about their pick or you can go confess something about your pick. It doesn't have to be about the fucking. And, and, it could be about the cold cuts in the corner or yeah. some shit. But that makes it so fun. And you guys can all replay it and watch it back after and you crack go, up. You go back and laugh at it. And we, we always give them space like they'll be doing that i'm ready like who's my next pick like they go do your thing you don't like worry about what what's being said in the back just say yeah, it watch it's it later hysterical. it's absolutely hysterical uh the undertaker came out tonight um <laughs> shut up wow you dumb motherfucker should be watching. yeah so a lot of good moments but i think the best is absolutely yet to come now that i think that this is starting to come together oh it's gonna be 20 times this better. year's draft and day is gonna be incredible i think all the guys outside of probably like dh because he's not on social media or anything like that <laughs> I think they're going to be very much. They're going to be way more invested because mm -hmm. there will be a couple people that aren't like I. I feel like yeah, Deech doesn't care. Shane doesn't care. George won't care. George, yeah, George, yeah, George is totally. He doesn't want George is going to do the same thing he always does every year. He's not going to. Yeah, gonna he's change. not going to do shit. So, but I think like the rest of the crew is going to start coming around to yeah. it more and more. So that's going to be really fun. So stay tuned should, for that. We should. We encourage more drinking at these things. So you oh, can, hell yeah, you know, speak a little bit. All right, so let's let's talk about uh, question number two. I think it was one player that you think is going to absolutely crush your ADP, so much so that you would be willing to take them a full three rounds earlier. Amanol. So, I mean, through, I don't know about like three rounds Well, you earlier, better fucking figure it out. But my guy is TJ Yeldon. I, um, listen, that, that Bill's backfield right now is kind of just a, you know, a total fucking mess, so you don't really know who's going to be the guy to come out on top. But right now, TJ Yeldon's ADP is 219. Uh, hold on, no, 225. So RB65 right now, which 
is very bad, but he RB, is, yeah, is that good? finished RB26 last year. So, I mean, he has the potential to to perform but at a decent level. But this is such a different fucking situation. I mean, that's the problem. He's on, he's on the but I still think he's going to I think he's going to be the end up the, Do you? The, the 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 guy in Buffalo that's going to take see most it. carries because you know, I don't Frank think it's going to be Gore. I don't think it's going to be McCoy. Yeah. I think Devin Singletary and him will split a lot of the work and yeah, I just see him so catches out of the fucking backfield. Messy. He does. He's like an all around, you know, all around back. He's just not the best. But I mean, he's going way too late, I think. Yeah. You're hold on. So your thought process on him is is is, is what? Do you think Frank Gore is going to die and LaShawn McCoy is... Yeah, I think TJ Yeldon is going to Everyone just be... dies, therefore he automatically so gets volume. So everybody dies. Yeah. Everybody dies, TJ Yeldon has to fill that role. He's young, he's 25 years old. He's not like, you know... And, and, and I mean, this stuff I think is stupid right now because how the fuck do you know? But they go by like strength of schedule. Yeah. Like 15th easiest for running backs. Like, all right, that's... What does you that know, mean? Yeah. What does that mean? But hey, it's 15th easiest for running backs, so there you go, people. So that's literally the average. Exactly. Well, 32 teams. I know. So All right, so the guys I'm shot. looking at, there's a lot of second-year wide receivers who I don't. really... <laughs> you say don't? Your guy, your guy is like... His ADP is pretty high, though. It I, is pretty high. I also... I also he's like um, wide receiver 33, though. I also but... looked at the draft board, and uh, I'm pretty sure he's going to be kept for like a 14th round pick. What? Yeah, someone drafted him really late. Well, and this was also my... my, my chance to actually like profess my love for him that's why i was okay. gonna say him. That's but fine. Go you could put him on uh there's a few second rounders i like i mean i was second year guys and uh i mean as you stated there's i don't know if there's anyone i would take three rounds above their adp the reason that they're at their adp is Crazy. because the risk is baked right. into where they're mm-hmm. being picked tyler boyd's going a little bit too high for me to put him into this category i like tyler boyd a lot christian kirk is a guy i fucking love Big fan. he's list. moving up and up and up and up and up um but i really like christian kirk i think i I think you need to grab him in as much dynasty action as you possibly can. I like him a lot for redraft. Um, Kiki QT, I like a lot. I like Marquez Valdez Scantling out in Green Bay to win that number I, two spot. I like him a lot. Yeah, he's, so he's my. There's a lot of second year wide receivers sure. that I think um, have a lot of breakout potential in their respective offenses. Because I, in the video I talked about earlier this week on Monday, one of like the big dynasty startup tips that I think people should buy into more is taking second year wide receivers over rookie wide receivers because you know rookie wide receivers are not going to produce right you know that their stats aren't going to be there so their value is going to be lower going into the second year whereas rookies coming off the nfl draft they're going to be as much hyped up as they as they're ever going to be right so their value going to the startup draft is going to be really high but you know they're not going to perform statistically so their value is eventually going to drop so grab the second year wide receiver who have already had that rookie year out of the way, and you don't have to worry about that production anymore. So I think these guys are closer to their breakouts, um, and they're still going like pretty far down. So those are a couple of guys on my list. Yeah, uh, well, I'm going to continue that trend with the second year wide receivers. And like you said, he's this guy's ADP is pretty high, but I'm seeing wide receiver 33 or so, and I I think that's kind of outlandish. I, I, is it Sterling Shepard? No. Okay. <laughs> I'm just, I you don't know gonna, who it is? No, I don't. <laughs> What? Oh, we talked about him. Go. Calvin Ridley. Oh, okay. I think he's. I think he's gonna absolutely. Snacks be a stud. loves. I, I Calvin love Ridley. Calvin Ridley this year. I'm all in on him, and I'm pretty fucking annoyed. You told me he's probably gonna be kept. Yeah, that's, I that's didn't realize it until yesterday when I was looking at the board. Um, because I was, you know, I, I started looking at my key- every like once a month. I'll look and be like, oh, let me update what I think about my keepers because for a while it had been carry on, and now I'm like, maybe Jones is the better yeah, play. Yeah, you're, you're gonna go back and forth. So I, that's where you see. So it. I was looking at some other keepers because uh, the reason I wanted to look because I was like, I was devastated Marlon Mack was gonna be kept, but yeah. then I realized he's not because he ended up on Deach's roster, who was gonna keep James Conner for his 17th round pick. Correct. So Marlon Mack will go back in the draft pool, which mm-hmm. makes me excited. But I'm still probably maybe not going to. Maybe I'm he keeps Marlon Mack. Over James Conner. I would. For like fucking 10 rounds earlier? Yeah, no the, way. The 17th round. Uh, still good. I would. So anyways, anyhow. I hope he's watching. Anyhow, <laughs> that's why I know Calvin Ridley's going to be kept and you can't fucking have him. Well, I can't have him in this league. But no, he might have not be kept. I didn't league. really I can have him in another league. And I just drafted him in so our why dynasty So why do you love him? I because to... he scored 10 touchdowns last year. So did. He's in a run. He's in a Lukiest stat ever. You, didn't let me, you can't you didn't touch. Let so why don't you love Mike? Year year. Why don't you love Mike let Williams? Me finish. Josh Allen Michael. scored 10, 11 touchdowns last year. Bitch. Josh Allen scored eleven so passing done. touchdowns. Sit done. You get cut off once and you're done. You fucking big baby. Bitch. Jeez. 
This fucking guy. Stupid bitch. Can you even hear us without the headphones? In? No, that's why I took them off. Actually, it's so weird. <laughs> I could hear. I, was, so I don't much. know how you do a full I, episode with. Those I can on. hear so much. It's crazy when I take them off. But no, I love Calvin Ridley. I love that ready-made offense. They're going to air it out. They play eleven of thirteen games. Their first thirteen in a dome. Matt Ryan yeah. is poised for a monster year. I'm all I'm, in on that Falcons offense. I'm all about Matt Ryan game. this year. Huge, I, I saw my don't mistake. fucking touch him. Huge mistake. Julio's a stud. We know that. Somebody's got to be opposite him. Calvin Ridley's a yeah, great number two Yeah, fucking Muhammad Sanu. The God. I think Muhammad Sanu is on his last leg to death. <laughs> I really do. Get him in the fucking but there, cemetery. But there's guys in front of him that I just, I like more. I like a, a Jarvis Landry. I like him more than Jarvis Landry. I like his upside more than Jarvis I Landry. I agree, yeah. Where like, he's going around in that area, I like him better than most of the most players. Most of these guys, I like got, Bobby, um, he, he, they have him five slots, six slots below Robbie Anderson. I like Robbie Anderson. He's the number one guy there, but Calvin Ridley's better. He's in a better offense, better system. Overall situation's better. I'm just, I'm very much into Calvin Ridley this year. So you're going to hear a lot from me. You know about Adam Thielen. Like he should be top five. Wait, can we talk about that trade I just made in our Dynasty League? Oh, yeah. We didn't bring that. Nah. I meant to bring that up before because I can't I, believe I was so salty when you traded for him. No, it's okay. So I got Adam Thielen for JGR Arcega Whiteside and next year's second round pick. Yeah. Um, I mean, obviously things could break right for Jaws and that could look really good. I like your. I, like your I side feel better. like I absolutely dominated that side yeah. of the trade. Yeah, though. I agree. And I then, do too. And then Scott tried to I, get. Scott back wanted at, me to give up Todd Gurley and like a fucking another pick for. Uh, he Thielen. told me that he was ta- talking with other people. Like he with gives Thielen. you this fucking beautiful trade. I get. I had shit offered him offer. something the night before that was like a, a fucking haymaker trade, and uh, it was probably too much, so we kind of just chopped it down. Yeah. I can't hear. And the best. I'm sorry. The, be- <laughs> <laughs> the best part about it is like when you receive a trade offer and you're like. Let me think about it. If you if you if you ever send me a trade, I'm like, let me think about it. I'm definitely just like, I'm about to accept, yeah. but I'm gonna pretend like I'm not that pumped up about it. Um, and then Scott tries to get back at me by sending me literally the worst fucking trade offer. Oh, yeah, that was Scott, really I'm not kidding when I say this is the worst <laughs> trade offer I've ever received in my life. It was Cortland Sutton and a second round pick for Byron Pringle and Will Greer. Two guys that are probably not even going to make their fucking respective rosters. This upset me, Dude, Scott. I Byron want you to know, Pringle is... He was I'm, offended. I'm being, was passive, offended. I'm being passive upside player. about it right now, and I'm only telling you through the video, but I'm pissed, and this is why I'm not, I'm not, I might not talk to you for the rest of the week, all right? <laughs> I'll talk to you, Scott. You can text me. Yeah, talk to them. Talk to them about that shit, because that is just unacceptable, and uh, don't ever fucking offer me anything about Byron <laughs> Pringle. I think... I, you know what's the funny part about this? It was because in the group me, he picked up Byron Pringle and I said something. I was like, I love that pickup. Yeah. And I was being sarcastic. <laughs> I had never heard of Byron Pringle before. Uh, hey, I, you know what? He took a shot. But I knew he that. Took like, shot. I knew yeah, that. Yeah, Nick likes this guy. He had like a roto world. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he likes this guy. Let me ask him uh, if he wants to give up Julio Jones for him. Yeah, so, anyways. Um, Dynasty trades are, are starting to pick up a little bit. Our go yeah, there's, there's been a few offers. I actually got two that I declined. Um, I've, I've tried so hard to give up like my Kansas City Chiefs stocks between uh, Watkins and Damian Williams. Exactly. I just – I don't know why. They're going to be good for me this year, but I want to get out. I want to get out from I, those I know guys. that feeling. Nick. I've been there Text too many me. times. Yeah? Text me. Which one? Either? Both? Well, we'll start with start with both, and then there's probably one I like a little bit more than the other. So Cool. All right. Let's move on to the herd of goats because we're already past the hour mark, I believe. Oh, sorry, guys. Oh, really? I'm so happy you interrupted me because now I want everybody in the comments – when snacks got interrupted like they do for you like you're some some little child that they want to coddle no they just they just see that i get unfair treatment and they want to have they got my back because they big dogs listen <laughs> the, the market is the market is the market you don't get unfair treatment you get what you deserve this is a fucking capitalist dungeon all right so you don't bring the noise we bring it to you all right that's how this works herd of goats <laughs> fucking brings it best funniest ways to die with the 1g pick animal you're on the clock Hang gliding. Oh, I'm hang gliding, honey. Take a good picture. I'm dead. Fucking hang. What a fucking idiot. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly, <laughs> exactly what I'm thinking of. That's a wild way to die. Anything yeah. like falling from the air, I think, is really crazy. Well, it's also one of those things because you're, like, you're probably having a fucking blast. Like, hang gliding is probably so fun. And then So, let me ask you. What's, like, what, what is the actual way of, of dying? Does your, like... Like do you thing, smash like into a mountain and hit something? Yeah, like how does it, or do you like? Uh, so yeah. I feel like, like oh, I smashing into something is always the funniest. Like, if, like no, it's just a question. If, if like the like the glider like rips, that's like a panic kind of scenario, yeah, and it's like not funny at all. Yeah, it's not funny. Like if they're just like going and then like hit like a fucking Will, mountain. Will Ferrell said it best. Yeah, exactly. Hang on, hang on. Hey, I'm dead. Honey, take a picture. Oh, I'm dead. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, 
Hang gliding. That's the one G. All Easy. Right. Two G. Uh, I'm I'm gonna get hit by a fucking <laughs> cannonball. <laughs> Imagine being. This is the fucked up part. Is like this has actually happened. Like back in the day. Like there was prehistoric wars where they were shooting arrows and cannonballs at each other. Imagine looking up and seeing a. F- Boom, yeah. You cannibal. know it's and there's nothing you could do. Hit you right nothing. in the chest. I'm like, damn, this is this is crazy. Like you try to avoid it, and then damn, this is crazy. It's a cannibal. <laughs> damn, this is crazy. It's coming at me. And it's like it, the closer it gets you, the bigger it gets, and you really have no escaping. It's like when a, tr- a tree falling on you or something. Yeah. So cannonball is my two G. Three G shotgun to the dick. I, why is this your first one? <laughs> because I think it's first of all, it's one of the hardest. It's hilarious. It's one of the hardest I've ever laughed in a movie. <laughs> I say that just the first time I heard it. A shotgun to the dick. But think about it. You're sitting there playing with a shotgun. Like, that's cool. You know? You shoot yourself in the dick. Not cool. Say that happened to me. You guys, we had to say, damn, dude, my fade to public co-host shot himself in the cock and he's dead. I would say, like, yo, it's hysterical. You a snack shooting himself in the dick? <laughs> what an idiot. What an idiot. What an idiot. That's just, that's a legendary way to die. It's probably not instantaneously, so it's probably going to hurt for yeah, a while. Yeah, that shit which sucks. That sucks. Probably more funny than fun. Right, correct. Yeah. It's, 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 you're We're not here to have what fun. You're, what you're doing, what you're doing with that death is leaving a legacy. Facts. You know what I mean? Big it's, fucking it's facts. Not, it's not an in-the-moment thing for yourself. You're leaving a legacy that'll always live on forever. It's pretty badass. They I mean, probably, not, they I probably don't know if it's ball- a good legacy, though. I, don't, I, I kind of like You want to be known as the guy that shot himself in the dick. That is unbelievably cool. <laughs> like, um, <laughs> one right. Out. Go. Falling out of a roller coaster. I mean, if you're, if you're a guy, you're a gal... You should love roller coasters. They're fun. They're entertaining. You have a blast. Your heart sinks into your asshole sometimes. <laughs> we have Six Flags down in Jersey, and it's a great time. What about falling out of one of those things? It's parachute without a without a uh, without a shoot and without being so much further in the air. But think about it. You're going up when you're at the top. When you're at the peak, the climax. Perverts. When you're up <laughs> that climax and you just fall out, you're flying. That's it. And you know you're gonna die. So those what? How many seconds you figure yeah. it is? I mean. What, like in, uh, you're flying through the you're air about to, to die? Say, say seven you fall or eight, out of maybe? Nitro, it depends top. on the seven ride. Eight. Yeah. Seven or eight. And the so launch you ride point. Nitro, you're all the way up top. Seven or eight seconds. You got, to, you got to just think about everything that you didn't do. All the things that you didn't like. Sounds you're going terrifying. down. Pick a ride that you would want to fall, like, uh, like the like King go off the rails. King of Car. I, I, I'm going Superman. Like, I want it to be one of those slingshot balls. I always thought it'd be oh, fun. No. As well, King of Car is my favorite. Ride, like on so. the uh, well on the seaside boardwalk, they have the ones oh, that yeah. are like fucking. You, you get into the ball and they fucking <laughs> sling you down. Yeah, Do you remember? Yeah, yeah. Wait, our prom weekend, that. Chris Bonomo threw up at the top of, of, dude, of one of those. Disgusting. Off really? The top of it did onto it, the boardwalk. Did, it, did you like see it? Yeah, dude, it was fucking disgusting. That's why he said it. See, and, but you know what? I, 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 would also, get, I would get shot off the ball. I also feel like this yeah. is like another legacy type move. Like See, I'm, I'm about a legacy. If you, if somebody's just, you are. You're all about legacy. I'm all about legacy. If so, it's 2019. Everybody's recording everything on their phone. Hey, I don't if know somebody if you know catches me on camera, what legacy means. and I'm going down like this, and I'm flying, and it's on the news, redhead dude falls to death after heroic. Roller coaster well, tragedy. Legacy, think, think about legacy. You're like, okay, Snacks dies. You know, you're talking with, or like, it's it's strangers, or even right. It's like, oh, that guy Snacks died. It's like, yeah. didn't he fucking fall out of a roller coaster? Didn't he get shot in the? It's dick? More like a like a legend, not like a. I mean, what's the difference? That's that's a le- if I'm a legend, that means I had I left a legacy. Yeah, I know, I know the words are fucking. Yeah, all right, all right. Learn your step Come your on, fucking you, vocab. You, you get what I'm saying? With the two O, I'm getting swallowed by an anaconda now. Originally, they thought I was talking about like the movie, the but great one of the greatest movies ever. This guy attempted to do this on a TV show like eight years ago, and <sighs> I remember the night it happened. It was like a premiere thing, and everyone was watching on TV. It got a big ratings, big views, almost as big as fucking Fade the Public. We were all we, on Xbox watching together. This, this was—I don't remember if it was Rainbow Six Vegas or if it was Call of Duty at the time. What were we playing? Do you guys remember? Oh, yeah, it was definitely I'm, Call of Duty. I don't know. Well, I we used to the get Rainbow on. Days, though. We used to get on Xbox. You know, at separate houses and play fucking this stuff all night together. My mom used to ask me, like, she was really concerned about me at one point because I'd be screaming, like, <laughs> really insensitive things, like, the entire night. <laughs> Nick, are you okay? Fucking fine. Oh, shut the fuck up. Yeah, so we'd be. You this know, was before Fortnite. Yeah, oh, yeah. Wait, I've never even played Fortnite. Yeah, this, is way, this is years and years ago. And uh, this was happening, so we all set up our Xboxes. We weren't playing, we were just watching TV, and we put our headsets on, and we were watching this guy get fucking. Supposedly, he's going to get eaten by an anaconda. So what I want to do is I want to give this a remix. I want to do it right. I want to get eaten, swallowed whole. I don't want to die immediately, though. I want to be alive inside the inside anaconda. Inside the anaconda. For a yeah, feel them out a little bit. It's probably nice and warm in there. You go back oh, to being like a, like a, a nice, warm giant baby. flashlight. <laughs> Dude, holy right? shit. 
That's incredible. It's you the get, first thing that came to you mind. Get, <laughs> you're literally why. inside of a flashlight, your entire body. So I can't imagine how good that would feel. You ever use a flashlight? Of course. Really? <laughs> yeah. You, did, you even had to ask him that? Yeah. I, he right. 100% yeah. did. That's incredible. So I'm uh, my 2-0 is swallowed by an anaconda. Solid one. Can't beat it. Death speaking inside of, of a flashlight. Speaking of swallowing stuff, uh, two, uh, actually I'm 3-0 is eat to death. So just crushing food and you just you just die from eating. I love too much. that. I want to clarify that in our group text message when we were doing <laughs> yeah, this, yeah, yeah. he said eat to death and then he I said followed eat yourself up. to death and then I'm yeah. He wanted to make sure that everyone knew that you weren't physically eating <laughs> yourself to death. That he was actually Dude. eating enough calories to kill himself. Someone might have thought that like you just like start eating your hand and yeah. yeah. Just... Actually, with the amount of like the with the comments that we get, there would absolutely hundred percent. Yeah, all basically all that. you just. Eat to the point like where your esophagus fills up with food and you like can't breathe. And you so just what die. food would you go with? How many calories do you think it would take to, to put you down? Like a million. <laughs> like not even <laughs> like, like, like not even joking. A million. <laughs> if that if you can consume a million, I think you'd be done. <laughs> <half> <laughs> like a million. I think you'd be no done. hesitation. <laughs> you've done twenty thousand. Yeah. No, dude, I did sixteen thousand at uh, the uh, semi after party in high school. You don't know that. Yeah, they counted. I ate like a family sized bag of chips, a, an entire thing of onion dip. And then like a, a whole. Do you uh, realize that freezer. you're at like 300 calories right now? Yeah, no, that's, you, I was going to say, well, how you how are you possibly? Do you know how many calories is an onion dip? Not not. Do you know how many calories 20,000 calories is? Yeah. I did the 10,000 calorie challenge and holy motherfucking shit! I'm gonna like, look it up. Onion you dip. have to eat like that what you just said, but do that like 10 ounce. times throughout the day. 16 ounce onion dip. Let's just take a chick chick quick look. But you have to eat every drop of it. I did, you idiot. And how much of it? 16 ounces a pound yeah it's dude they wrote it in brian and peter and other people wrote it in their yearbook it was like max's like <laughs> twenty thousand calorie night like that was like a thing like five things you remember from high school i don't know if i can believe it 16 ounces has 15 servings i respect it but and a serving has serving has like 60 calories i'm telling you you're <laughs> so underestimating how much food twenty thousand calories is Anyways, uh, you would eat what, food, what food are you going to eat yourself to death with? Taco Bell. Would there be a strategic part to it? Like, I mean, I don't think I would pick just one food. No, of course not. You have to go. You, I would hit every fast food chain. Yeah, you'd probably start with fast food, and then while you can still like move around, and then when you can't move anymore, which is at like seven thousand, you, you just. I mean, I feel like eating rice is the easiest way to go. That's like no, but that's not, that's not enjoyable. All. Yeah, I mean, it would have to be a, a no. Picture. You should you should start it on Thanksgiving. No. Why? I would want to go straight junk. Great. Straight junk. I eat like I start like through the day. Like go breakfast food, go lunch food, go dinner food. I'd start so you with, do like, like you do like breakfast. Yeah, like McDonald's fifty pancakes, breakfast. some waffles, uh, <laughs> fifty pancakes. You know, like some crepes, <laughs> maybe some Nutella. Get some thick Nutella. I feel in there. like if these crepes are not like if you're going to kill yourself, like <laughs> don't eat a thin. Crepe. Don't eat thin <laughs> things. Yeah, only the thickest, fattest well, shit. Listen, I haven't like planned this out. Like I'm not planning on doing this. It's just you know. We'll come prepare if, next time. If. if you want to win Herd of Goats, you got to come prepped. Well, my next one Go. is the 1A. Uh, yeah. And that is falling into a wood chipper. Because, <laughs> listen, if you guys this ever is seen. neither fun nor funny. <laughs> no, it's hysterical. <laughs> Have you ever seen um, Tucker and Dale vs. Evil? No. No. So the clip's probably playing right now. The guy, they go to like, he goes to like tackle the guy and he misses and flies right into the wood chipper. And he sees him like in there, and he tries to grab his legs, and he's pulling his legs out. It's hysterical. <laughs> is but, it a comedy um, movie? Oh yeah, it's a comedy. The guy's getting just shredded alive in a wood chipper. Yeah, it's was that the same year Bloodsport won uh, Best Picture? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Dude, listen, been. you guys don't what know a competition this. Competition between those two but movies. If you go back on that video, there's still Oscars. comments coming in about Bloodsport being a great movie. There was one like the other day. So okay, what happens so when ten thousand yeah. people watch a video? There are going to be fucking four weirdos that are like, "Yes, Bloodsport, brother." No, Bloods. <laughs> <laughs> Enough. Support blood board. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm not. I'm not about that wood chipper. Two A. Two A. About that wood chipper. Two A. You look up, and an avalanche is upon you. I don't like this one either. <laughs> what? <laughs> that's, Dude, that's terrifying. Being demolished. Like going tubing. Do, do oh yeah, while being tubing. That's that's. <laughs> I just assume throw that, that in there. It's different. Yeah, only because uh, anytime someone invites me to go skiing or snowboarding, I'm immediately like no, unless there's tubing. I can't. I hate those other fucking winter sports. But I'm a big tuber, and I would love to go via an avalanche. It's 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 like one of nature's. You know, there are not a lot of things in nature that are like truly fucking fascinating, like truly overwhelming in in proportion right you have like 
avalanches, earthquakes, um, volcano <laughs> eruption. Really nice lighting <laughs> animal. Volcano eruption, maybe like a tidal wave or something. And I think the avalanche fits into that. And I would love to go by one of those. Uh, if you like waves. nature, I think that's like a peaceful way to go. With Yeah, with I'd, I'd imagine it's not too peaceful. But well, I mean, I'm, I feel I'm like in. it's just I'm in. I'm all in. It's just you see it and then that's it. That's all you see. Yeah. Maybe I wonder like what the depth bit. is like because it's I can't imagine that you probably die by freezing, right? Uh, uh, no, no, impact. I feel uh, like the force. You think the impact kills impact, you? Impact is definitely kill soft. you. Um, it is soft. Last time lot, I checked, a lot yeah. of that, yeah. dude. But I, yeah. I'd imagine it buries you, and then you either like suffocate, suffocate or, or, right. or well, if the, if the impact you'll, you'll, doesn't kill you from it moving like it wouldn't kill miles, me. I'm a hundred miles beast. per hour down a mountain. I'm sure it I would probably too. I probably wouldn't fall. It probably wouldn't. Yeah, it's not the whole time as the avalanche rushed down. No, I would tube down it. It probably wouldn't really affect me too much. But you'd be fucked. Oh. You'd, you'd eat I'd your twenty thousand calories and be rolling down Listen, the avalanche. I'd be a snowman by the end. <laughs> That'd be incredible. <laughs> Anyways, that's my two A, three A, three A. Uh... Viagra overdose. <laughs> a lot of dick stuff for you. What? A lot of dick stuff. Yeah, you're a big dick guy. What are you talking about? I mean, you shotgun to the dick, now Viagra oh, wow. overdose. I didn't even put two and two together, yeah. Yeah. Well, like, like the dick. Oh, oh, yeah. I wish I'd probably Ooh, pick something Would you be on Vi- Viagra when shot in the dick? Mm. No, that would... Mm. I guess you could combine. Easy target. No. Actually, not for Maybe you, you could but, put no. your like whole dick in the barrel. Jesus Christ. All right. Is that too much? All oh, right. my uh, God. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I, I, I said that because that means you were you were going out with a bang. Literally. You were going out with a bang. So it's kind of legendary stuff that you overdosed on Viagra, not like overdosed on heroin or something, if you know what I mean. That's wild. And there's always commercials like, if you have an erection lasting longer than four hours, please call your doctor. Yeah, Bro, yeah. if I have an erection lasting over four hours... I'm calling the Guinness Book of World Records, not a fucking doctor. Do you do you think, or your girlfriend, well, one of those two? Do you think that? Well, yes. Her do too. you think that when you OD on the Viagra, the erection lasts? 100. percent Like it that's kind of the cops yeah, get there and you're like fucking, fucking still rigor mortis. Erect. That's but that's kind of why I want. Great song by I want to make sure that I'm still capacitated. You want to make sure that when they take the pictures of you dead. Well, and it's a crime when scene. I'm when I'm in the casket, I still want it up. <laughs> so like I when I have the pants okay. on, I want I you know that's how I want. Everybody, to go. That's how you pay your respects, a little jerk yep. off the snacks that's as you it. walk by. Everybody touch touch the magic guy. Okay, <laughs> one T. Let me uh, let me let me round out my herd with um, an online troll killing you. So there's <laughs> there's a lot of people on Twitter that get in uh, Twitter and and social media itself that get in the fights. I've been in plenty of Twitter wars and all these other types of things. Um, and they always say, well, you'll, you wouldn't fight me if you saw me on the street. You wouldn't touch me. You wouldn't touch me. You go, yeah, I would. Yeah, I would. And they go, all right, well, come find me. Blah, 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 blah. I've been giving people my address for years, to be honest. So, with yeah. You. So you never give the address, but this time you do. You give the address and all of a sudden one day, Roger from, from the Twitter. Rick the, from fucking Texas. From, Rick from Texas shows up at your door and you notice his face. That's the one in the, in his Twitter, Abby. <laughs> you see like, the oh, little shit. circle around his head. Oh, <laughs> shit. Ricky from Texas, whatever his name was, takes a gun and kills you. You went out fighting your fight, okay? You, you went out doing what you wanted to do. You took no shit from Ricky. You gave him your address. You were a man enough. You actually won because if you think about it, he did what you told him to do. He did exactly You're what you did. You're his boss. You made him your little bitch. And he's going away kill for me, murder. Kill me, pussy. You're yeah, getting a yeah. murder you off, kill the, me, you're getting a murder off the street. Yeah. There are so many wins in the column so many you, wins. so many wins you don't lose in that yeah. scenario i'm all in on that i wish that was mine i was gonna say something like that like someone comes and kills me off of off of 100%. youtube just kill me um my 2t was very similar to basically our sunday morning we had a great saturday <laughs> oh night my God, this great boring. saturday nights do not translate into sunday mornings and uh at least I don't want to sound like a cornball and say just like partying too hard. But when we were younger, when we were younger, we used to anytime we had like a good party or we'd like go away for a weekend, we went down the shore for a weekend. What we would say with our friends, and this was fucking very legitimate. And it scares me to the fact that we this would have happened if it, if this ever occurred. We would always say when we got somewhere that if someone dies during the weekend, we don't say anything until the weekend is over. <laughs> Because we, we are enjoying ourselves. We want to continue the party. So if someone died on Friday, we put him in the closet and then call the cops on like Monday or something. So we found him. And it's fucked up. You know, I, in my heart of hearts, I believe we would have done that. 100%. When we were like 18 or 19 there years old. There is 100% chance we would have done When there, we were at that seaside condo, 100%. There was nothing 
more fun like in my life than than that shit that we did like yep. in in the seaside condos and in the seaside houses and shit so i would have loved to have passed away during one of those ragers i'm with you <laughs> you would have put me in a closet for two days in, as a dead body we loved it oh my god because honestly we're, as a dead body we're 26 27 years old it's like 20, a beer in your max. hand <laughs> <laughs> you're Dude, everyone comes in every like couple hours fills me up tops yeah. me off with the killer why you're, is it you're, empty you're, <laughs> <laughs> I'm dead, but it keeps emptying itself. Yeah, like, it was like, whoa, what the fuck? Sick. We wouldn't even know this at the time. It would be so dumb. Yeah, it's honestly, it is a great way to go because the way I felt Sunday was I would rather be dead. 100%. Like, but I would be going out well, was, over like I'd rather that. be dead than a lot of things, to be honest. 100%. But. Like, you're pushing 40. We're late 20s. <laughs> yeah. This stuff is, is very difficult. It's got to stop. It's got to stop. Three years ago, I was able to wake up Sunday morning, go to Cornerstone, pound 16 mimosas. With ease. Now I'm like, get the fuck away from me. Like this upcoming Sunday morning after this fucking the after the baller oh, show yeah. when we go out and, yeah. and and do heinous things like disgusting Sunday Grotesque morning things. I will wish I was dead. Yeah. So maybe you know what? You guys want to kill me on Sunday? <sighs> Actually, I think I think animals should kill us both. Down. Yeah. Get a shotgun to the dick. Make sure I'm standing behind you. Let him. If take, you guys let want this, this um this this my last one here is a uh, it's a pretty effective way. This is the three T. Just eat some fucking like wild plants. Let's I just saw some, this, and this is what just separated us from wild you. mushrooms. This is just a, this is you just fell off the cliff here. Listen, this is a real thing. People go foraging for wild mushrooms like on purpose, eat fucking wild mushrooms, and then die. Like, idiots! What an idiot! Like fucking idiots! So you want to go out as a fucking idiot? No, I don't want to go. I just think it's hysterical that like you, there's plenty of great food out there that you can have. And you decide to eat the fucking berries and the mushrooms. What if you're in lost in the woods? Well, there's yeah. not so much great food you could have. What do you think? You're at a fucking buffet in the middle of the woods? Well, why the fuck are you in the middle of the woods? <laughs> I don't know. It's what all, are you doing? It's a different conversation. Because it is, happens this all is the what time. You picked. Yeah. Right? Isn't this like the. This, wait, this was such picked. a good herd. I feel like it was just fucking haymaker after haymaker. You? And then you say eat fucking wild berries. You stupid Dude. motherfucker. <laughs> wild berries. You will, stupid. What's unbelievable is out of the four you of your picks. You probably gave the most reasonable explanation for this one because I didn't make any I also, sense. I also, you can become severely dehydrated, suffer from diarrhea, vomiting, and First, cramping. It's not and funny. The, it's not the, fun. <laughs> snacks. <laughs> snacks. Funny. Me and Snacks <laughs> go for the ridiculous ones. You always go for the people's vote. Yeah, you go for the course. public's vote, how's and that's that why the, you lose. How's that the people's vote? I went, we went for haymakers. Dude. No, this is your history in in the herd. Would of you goat. eat a fucking mushroom you just randomly found on the ground? Sure, if we're in a, having a good weekend or something. You ever watch Tree Trippers Entourage? They didn't eat those out of the ground. That no, they, they came, came from, from Eric Roberts. That shit is phenomenal. They came the from RJ. Yeah. Yeah. True. Okay, we'll go to the first comment. Only because, no, no, no. Only because I laughed really, really hard. At the first it, one, or no, no. Uh, I mean, no the the guy's name is Leonard really Fournette. His name oh, is Leonard Dude, he emailed me today. Did he? He asked me if I wanted to catch these hands. <laughs> <laughs> so this just makes it even funnier. Yeah. He literally goes, hey, guys, longtime fan. So my league's commissioner, Roger, I love how he says Roger. I don't. Even, I doubt that's even his name. No, no, dude. He's talking about Roger Goodell. Hell, you joke, idiot. Pretending he's Leonard oh. Fournette. <laughs> it was at this moment he knew. He fucked up. Wow, fucking moron. You how are you going to say this is the funniest ass. one? Until I have to read this that one, that. but I don't even understand it. <laughs> you fucking Well, because you know what? When I read it, I didn't read his name, Leonard Fournette. You just said that. I know because I just looked at it. Fucking idiot. Damn, Leonard bro. Fournette always kept... Every time I do a running back video where I talk about Leonard Fournette, he asks me if I want to catch him. Dude, that was and so funny. And then he me today about I it. was literally sitting here before cracking up at that. Now I hate him. I mean, you should hate yourself. He's a great honest. guy. That's all we got for well, today. Well, when you bring the noise on Herd the Goats like I did. Go eat a fucking mushroom. <laughs> go eat a wild berry. That's actually the healthiest thing Snacks would probably have ever eaten, to be honest with you. <sighs> what? That's it. I mean, Hit I, that I up really button. wanted to read this Subscribe one, to the channel if you're new. Comment Dude, from, we're at like an hour and 40 Ryan minutes Hicks, already. He said can't. animal has good points no, on all the no, arguments no, on no, Superflex. No, Let it for that. I hate Snacks you. Snacks thinks. Go Giants.